Hi there. This is Heidi with Heidi Mine, and I am going to do some KiwiCo unboxing. For this subscription, we signed up in June of 2022. And what they let you do with KiwiCo is you can pause your uh, membership or you can request that your first three boxes uh, be sent all at once. We signed up for three subscriptions, the Yummy Crate, the Atlas Crate, and the Stem Crate. Uh, so I went ahead and the first three for each subscription, I had all sent uh, in July, or I guess it was the end of June, so we got them in July. Uh, so that we would have them when our school year started, but then we just kind of kept putting them to the side. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do uh, an unboxing for all of these. And I will try to do chapters because I'm going to do three of each in this one video. So it's probably going to be a pretty long video. So the first set that I'm going to do is the Yummy Crate, and these are the yellow box. They are for ages six and up, and these are kind of food-themed um, crates. Uh, so they give you like, recipes and ideas, and I think they add a little bit of science to that. Um, and yeah. At the end of this video and in the description, I will put all of the costs for each of these. I had them written down, but I, I moved that. So, um, yeah, we will just go ahead and do these in alphabetical order because I'm not sure which was supposed to be like the first one we would have gotten had we done this in order. So we're going to go ahead with magic, magical and munchable. I'm going to put these other two away. Okay. And I don't remember. I think I've looked through these before, but I haven't. I don't know if I've ever done um, videos for these. So you get this little kind of folder and it says magical and munchable. And there are recipes for the blueberry muffins and more color changing treats. So when you open it up here. I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move the box out of the way just for a few minutes so you can kind of see it there. Um, it tells you what's in the crate. So we'll be making a batch of blueberry muffins, uh, lemonade, blue and pink noodles, make your own colorful pH indicator, paint with transforming pigment pigments, and discover the legend of forbidden rice. So that's fun. This is a little sticker right here. I like you very much. And then these are our recipe cards. So the parents get kind of a little letter here. This says that this is gonna be hand wash only. It just kind of goes over uh, what's in, what's gonna happen in this crate. It gives me some, um, <laughs> kind of a grocery list. Uh, and then suggested ingredient substitutions. Test out cabbage chemistry. Um, so you find out how acidic or basic different chemicals are. I remember doing this in school, so this will be fun. Um, so it talks about what you need, what you get in the kit. So you get these little beakers, they're little plastic beakers. And we get four of them. And then there should be some pipettes. Yep. There are some pipettes in here. Let me go ahead and just open this real quick. So there are two pipettes. And there are... Oh, there we go. There is a pH color scale. Oops. There we go. So that's cool. Put this back in the box for right now. And then uh, it gives us all of the 
instructions about how to do the experiment for that side. Those are what we need. And then this is just a little bit of information there. So that's super fun. Um, make color pop bookmarks. So again, we'll use the beakers. Let's open this up because I think it tells, yeah. And it tells us we've got some envelope kind of stuck here. So we've got some paper tester. These are some bookmarks. Okay, so it's the paper is inside of like this vinyl. So that's cool. Um, we've got the cotton swabs, the bookmark holders, oh, and this handy dandy paintbrush. And ironically, um, a citrus juicer. Uh, and I say ironically because I actually used to have a citrus juicer that was very similar to this and I have been looking for it for months um, and I think I put it in a garage sale pile so now I now I have a citrus juicer <laughs> again um, so that's cool uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this stuff back in here because now that I've shown it to you I can put this stuff away and then we'll just go through the rest of what is in this Okay, so it just talks about color magic um, that you use lemon juice and it has different um, color changing reactions with the paper. Um, there's a little tasty tidbit back there. Uh, cooked, it's about cooked cabbage, smelly cooked cabbage. Okay, I don't know what that says. Color changing antho cyanin I might be saying that wrong um, but this is the yummy zine so this is like a little magazine um, we've got ginger and barley's restaurant the very berry variation so there's just some uh, I think it's like a little little story or something like a little comic and then it gives you some information about how to make different colors um, for natural dyes. So that's fun. Um, talks about lemon juice and baking soda. Uh, there's some information about fruits. There's a little like word find puzzle kind of thing. Uh, and then they give you all their handles so you can tag your projects and that sort of thing. And then on this side, these are the recipes. Um, I do like this because they have like, you know, essentially you could put it like this, maybe standing up. Um, but I do wish they gave us something like a box or a book or some way to put these somewhere. Cause I don't know what I'm going to do with these, to be honest. Um, but there's a recipe for berry muffins. Um, so that looks good tie-dye noodles. I wonder if you use, yeah, you use vermicelli noodles. Um, so that's cool. Uh, yeah. And then transforming lemonade. So super fun. Um, as I'm recording this, we are actually getting ready for our summer trip to my grandmother's house and we're going to be bringing all of our kiwi crates with us so my hope is that we will get through as many of these kiwi crates as possible while we were we are on vacation um and if my kids let me record some of what they're doing i will definitely add that to my channel. They don't particularly like being on camera, so I will have to play that by ear. So let me go ahead and put this one away. 
So again, this is the Magical and Munchable Yummy Crate. So we'll put this guy to the side. And next up, we will do Melty and, oh, sorry about that, Melty and Stretchy. little booklet out so this says grilled cheese and more gooey goodness um funny story my kids don't actually like grilled cheese <laughs> I don't know why I love grilled cheese I think grilled cheese is awesome so we've got this little sticker here life is cheddar than ever uh, in this crate we will find out about milk's main protein cassian I apologize if I'm saying these wrong I I will figure out the right way to say them eventually. Um, so we're going to make baked gooey or bake gooey sandwiches, cook creamy soup and crunchy crisps, make melty mini pizzas, see how stretchy mozzarella can be, take the cheesy balance challenge and catch up with downhill cheese chasing. I don't know if we're going to end up making a creamy soup in Arizona. It will be in the hundreds. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so again, we've got the grown up sous chef little pamphlet here. We've got my grocery list. So it's like a tomato soup. Um, sorry. Hello, friend. Ugh. Sorry about that. <laughs> the cats normally don't get that interested in me. Um, so we've got yeah, the grilled cheese, the hmm, mini polenta pizzas, that that will be interesting. Uh, the tomato soup with Parmesan crisps and yeah, very cool. And then again, the suggested ingredient substitutions. My grandma loves it when I come out. She likes my cooking, so we'll see if, if she wants to try these experiments with us. Uh, it says, check out stretchy cheese science. Um, how far can mozzarella stretch at different temperatures? That is interesting. Um, so gather the tools, measure the ingredients. So included in our crate here is a very sticky silicone, I'm assuming it's silicone, baking mat. It doesn't say, it just says baking mat. Um, I don't think I've ever opened this, but this is, it's kind of, it's sticky, but it's not like coming off of my hands. So that's good. And then there is a little tape measure here so we can measure how, how stretchy the mozzarella is. Um, and then we have here our experiment. So very sciencey. Um, and then the tasty tidbits. Oh, and why is melted cheese stretchy? Fun fact, I worked for a few pizza parlors in my lifetime, um, and most pizza parlors don't use 100% mozzarella on their pizzas. They use a blend of different cheeses, so it is what it is. Play Meltdown, a cheesy game of precision. So this kind of looks like, oh, what's that game? Um, with the marbles and the sticks. If you're old, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, so it says, pull out the proteins, but don't drop the fats and water. That's very cute. That is very cute. So it tells you how to build the little set and how to play. Um, and then it gives you just some little facts. So we get these little pom-poms, some uh, popsicle sticks, and we get this kind of slice of cheese looking puzzle thing um, that will end up being the container for all of all of this. So it's kind of fun. Okay, and then the yummy zine here says close up on Cassian. Cassine? I don't I don't know. Um my last name is M-E-I-N. It makes an I sound. Cassine? I don't know. Lots of ways to pronounce that, I suppose. Only one right way, right? 
Ginger and Barley's Restaurant, the Great Cheese Meltdown. So you get this little kind of story here. And then it talks about um, the cheeses. I like cheese. We, we, I like a lot of different kinds of cheese, so um, not the stinky stuff, though. Then you've got this kind of true or false, multiple choice, little question part. Um, delicious cheeses from around the world. I love cheese fondue. Love, love, love. Uh, I don't know if I've ever had that. Um, so, yeah, very cool. Maybe we'll try some different cheeses. Uh, and then we've got the little fill in the blank kind of word find. And then KiwiCo is on YouTube and their handles for social media, all that good stuff. Oops. Okay. And I'm not going to worry about putting all those back in exactly how I, I got them out. Okay. So then we have the grilled cheese um, sandwich recipes. And I guess we're gonna make these in the oven. So that'll be interesting. I don't normally make grilled cheese in the oven. I make them on the stovetop, And I also have a panini press. Um, so I do like making paninis as well. Ooh, they put all kinds of different fillings, apples, mushrooms, sundry tomatoes, ham, Grilled onions, pear. Interesting. My kids wouldn't eat most of that. <laughs> um, but, you know, some kids have very advanced palates. Tomato soup with Parmesan crisps. I'm very interested in making this. I have been wanting to learn how to make a tomato soup for a while. I love tomato basil soup and my kids love tomato basil soup. So that should be fun. Um, one of these years I will get my backyard ready to do a garden because I do love growing tomatoes. It's one of the things that I can grow without messing up too much. And, and basil, actually, I used to grow basil in my front yard quite a bit. Um, so it's got all the ingredients here and how, how to make it all. Um, I am interested in these Parmesan crisps because I've seen chefs do it and stuff. Um, and then things you can add to your soup. Polenta pizzas. This sounds interesting to me because you need polenta crusts. Um, we've been doing a lot of, oh, here we go. Okay, so pre-cooked polenta, kind of in like a little tube, and then you cut it. And then you do the pizzas. So that's neat. That's very neat. Uh, we've been doing a lot of different types of pizzas this year. Um, we've done them on uh, English muffins. We've, we tried them on crescent dough. And I don't think it turned out as good. The kids kind of liked it. but So that is the melty and stretchy. I apologize if it seems like I'm going fast, but I am going to be opening nine boxes in this entire video. So I don't want it to go too, too long and to have people not want to watch any of it. Oops, sorry. And the last yummy crate box that we have for this video is going to be shaped and stuffed. <laughs> so many jokes I could say about that. Um, Okay, so we're going to take this out. This is going to be cheese ravioli and more primo pasta. Um, the kid's father side of the family is very Italian. And my mother-in-law used to always tell me she was going to teach me how to make ravioli. And we never got around to that, unfortunately. So uh, we will be definitely... Um, making some ravioli for her. So, well, I mean, she's no longer with us, but uh, in her honor. In this crate, meet gooey, chewy, gluten. Oh, don't we know that one? Make puffy stuffed ravioli, 
layer a delicious lasagna, stir up some hearty tomato sauce, practice shaping pizza with Play-Doh, use your noodle in a name game, and learn about the world's longest strand of pasta. And then we've got this little sticker here. Everything is awesome. I have made pasta before, um, and I love making pasta. I, I think it's great. It cooks way better than store-bought, so uh, I'm excited about this one. So we've got our letter to the grown-up sous chef. We have our ingredients list. Um, really excited for this one, actually. And then our substitutions. Uh, and then we've got a make pasta play-doh. Okay, so I, I, I'm guessing this is, yeah, this is like the, the flour dough. Um, so that's cool. Flour, water, cream of tartar, salt, vegetable oil, food coloring, cups and spoons, plate, pot, whisk. All right, and a mini, okay, so what we get in here is this, <laughs> they're calling this a mini rolling pin. Um, it's a, it's a large dowel, <laughs> but that's okay, that, that works, you know. Kids aren't that picky. I think I have like three rolling pins in my kitchen. Um, so yeah, it's just making a dough uh, in, in the pot, and then they can kind of shape it. Um, and then it talks about fagiolini and strike strichetti, strichetti. Okay. I've never heard of those before, but sure. Let's roll with it. Uh, so yeah. And then the little tasty tidbits there. And then the play the, play the pasta name game. Use your noodle to name some pasta. Um, we, we're we super limited on our pastas. Uh, my kids like penne pasta and they like macaroni and then we do like spaghetti. Um, there was like a few months where I could not find fettuccine noodles anywhere. That was pretty fun. Um, I mean, humorous fun, not, not really fun. So it, there's a little game here that um, they give you a 24 playing card set. I don't know if this is going to want to open for me. My fingers are not that big. Ah. Okay. Mezzalune is half moons. So cool. J Mele, J Meli. So that's fun. Um, tortellini. We used to like tortellini. Uh, my mother in law used to make this spinach filled pasta and she would call it stufferoni. And I don't know if that was really what it was like, what that, if that's the recipe or if it's just what she called it, but it was really, really good. Uh, she made good Italian food. I'm not going to close that all the way because it doesn't want to cooperate. So you've got the game here about how to play, how to score, um, and then you learn all the different types of pasta. So that's cute. We have our yummy zine, strong and stretchy gluten. Uh, the pasta predicament. So it talks about all of the different, I don't know, it, it, whatever this is, it's like a little story about pasta. And then it talks about gluten in pasta, which is not always good for everyone. Our family can eat gluten, so we're, we're fine. Um, but I have made things with gluten-free flour, so it would be interesting to see the difference in, I don't particularly like store-bought gluten-free pasta or whole wheat pasta. Um, I know they're not the same, but I'm just saying, I, I, for me, I don't like the, the texture of them, but maybe if I made my own, it would be different. So then we've got more like trivia and multiple choice questions. 
And then it talks about pasta and noodles around the world. So ramen, kugel. I am not going to say that right. <laughs> or that one. And I'm definitely not going to say that one right. So, um, but very cool. Uh, my kids love pasta with all kinds, like all kinds of different things. So, uh, and then we've got the like word find and the social media stuff. Okay. And then we have our recipe cards. So we have one for cheese ravioli, which is perfect. Um, my kids do like cheese ravioli, especially when we can pick our own cheeses to put in. Uh, so it does have this super cute little pasta maker or ravioli maker. Um, and it does feel like this orange piece separates. Uh, I'm not going to pull it apart because this is kind of, the wrapper is kind of stuck on there. So um, maybe it doesn't separate. I don't know. I don't know. It's got different directions here. So it's talking about poke the dough into the sheets to make 10 pits, add your filling, layer the dough on top, use a rolling pin and rub those ridges down, take off the ravioli mold, split the ravioli squares. Yeah, so it must not come apart. That's fine. Um, I really wanna get a ravioli maker for my KitchenAid this will be fun in the meantime. Uh, and then lasagna. It, it's been a while since I've made a lasagna. Um, my kids don't really like meat sauce, so we can just make it without meat sauce. Uh, but it does give you the ingredients, the tools you need, uh, the how to make the lasagna, put it together, cook it, whatnot, um, different things you can put inside of it. I had a friend once that told me that you didn't have to cook the noodles before you put them into the lasagna. And I'm like, mm, you really have to cook the, the, the noodles. N now I think you can get ones that they're pre like par cooked, but at the time that's not what he was getting. <laughs> like you have to cook them first. Um, and this is for marinara sauce. I love marinara sauce. So this will be fun to learn how to make. I'm confused. Oh, is that supposed to be garlic? Oh, it's onion. Okay. I'm like, I don't think that's garlic. Um, yeah, I like marinara sauce, so that'll be fun. Um, and then it gives you all the stuff. So, yeah. Those are the first three yummy crates that we got in our 12 month subscription. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close all of this up and then I will get out the next set of boxes. Um, again, this one is called shaped and stuffed and this kit is for ages six and up. Um, I, we again we haven't used these yet so I don't know how interested my kids really are in them uh, but hopefully we'll be using these this summer and then I can report back after the summer um, okay. so, so be right back now we are moving on to the Eureka crate part of the subscription um, I think I called it stem earlier which this is kind of it's like stem influenced um, this is for ages 14 and up. My oldest daughter only just turned 13 this year, but she does really like putting things together. Um, from previous years that we've gotten boxes, she's put together headphones and a speaker um, and a uh, an LED light and just all kinds of different things. So I decided to get this subscription for her because I knew she'd be able to build things. Um, so yeah, so we'll see. We'll see if she ends up liking them. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna move some of these out of the way. 
so that we can get through them. So this one is a build your own perpetual calendar. Um, so these are good for, let's see, it says engineer a mechanical calendar that tracks the days of the week. So this will be fun. Hopefully they will let me record them, even if it's something like this, where it's just overhead. Um, so we do have our little manual here, and then we've got all of our pieces, parts. So real quick, I'm just going to kind of go over, because I'm not going to take all of these out. Uh, there are a lot of different parts for this. There's like a, I don't, what do they call that? Like pressed particle board or something. Um, and then these are all the little add-ons for the dates and things. So that's pretty cool, actually. Let me go ahead and put this stuff back in. And I'm going to move the box to the side so we can just take a look at the manual here. So this is the maker's guide for the perpetual calendar. Um, you can see the picture here that it says the day of the week, the month, and the day, date, day, whatever that is. Um, what's in this booklet? Step-by-step -step instructions to build a mechanical perpetual calendar plus explorations of the science, engineering, and history behind the design. So it shows a picture here of a vintage flip calendar. Um, <laughs> I remember seeing something like this when I was a little kid. Uh, so it would not have been a new thing when I was a kid, not, not by a long stretch, but um, one of my grandparents might have had one of these. So uh, yeah, so it gives you some history about like, calendars and days of the week and um, and all that good stuff. What is this supposed to be? Maybe a like a yeah, it says figure. That's cool. Um, so then it gives you kind of a, an idea of all the parts, and then. This is great. It gives you the history, the instructions to build, behind the design, the science, five things, and then design challenge. Um, so here it talks about perpetual calendars, the history of design, why we would want to have calendars, because, you know, they're kind of important. Uh, and then it talks about building the number tumbler. I wanted to say that slowly because I know if I said it quickly I would have mangled it um, and just how to put the whole thing together so and then the building the day tumbler these are really cool and add the month dial And then it talks about connecting it all together. And done. And then it talks about how to use the calendar. So, it, you know, obviously this is, um, it's mechanical only in that it's, um, you turn the little dials and things and it'll keep track of stuff. So that's pretty neat. Um, I think she'll like this, my oldest daughter. I don't know if my youngest daughter will find much interest in this. She doesn't like the building stuff so much, but you never know. That could always change. They do, this is good. They have a little thing about troubleshooting. Um, and it talks about behind the design. Tile prototypes tested 23. Okay. Months needed to design three or 90 turns of your calendar. That's cool. And the Geneva drive talks about where it's been used before. 
this just kind of reminds me of like um the Jetsons, Mr. Cogsworth. <laughs> um but you know, you you'd have to be a little older maybe to know anything about Mr. Cogsworth. Um and then it talks about calendars gone wrong. Uh the Julian calendar, Gregorian calendar, leap years, uh the French Republican calendar. And, oh, the computer calendar crisis, <laughs> the Y2K, I lived through that. It was hilarious. It was, it was, that was a fun time. <laughs> uh, and then creative calendar, you can, I guess, create your own. Um, these are neat. It talks about the Aztec sunstone. Um, the kids and I do kind of follow the Chinese calendar. I always think that's really interesting. Um, yeah, so I think that will be a fun kit to build. Um, again, hopefully she will let me record, even if it's just an overhead view of her putting this together and then I can share it later on. Uh, cause I think that one's really neat. Um, yeah. And next we have a programmable music box. Create a mechanical music box and program it to play your own song. That's pretty neat. Um, a lot of people in my family sing. I do not. <laughs> my dad sings. Um, and my oldest has been learning the guitar and also the keyboard. So I don't know why, but they've got like a little uh, crochet hook in here. So we'll, we'll figure that out. It looks like there's some rubber bands. So that's probably what that's for. This has a lot of parts, um, and it has a lot of small parts. So I'm just going to kind of quickly show you some of these packages. I'm not going to open them. Um, oh, that's heavy. That's the keys. I'm just going to show them to you real quick, and then we will go through the box. But this has a lot of parts. Um, we'll stop there. And then all of this. A lot of these little doohickeys. I think that's like where you get some of the sound. There's tons of little rubber bands. Um, these are like felt pieces. I'm not sure where those go. That'll be interesting to find out. Um, these are kind of puffy stickers and these are super heavy. These are the keys. Um, I wonder if they're labeled with the note that they play. I'm sure it'll tell us in the directions. I don't read music. <laughs> Another thing I don't do. Oh, and, and our crochet here. Don't forget that. Okay, so we've got the maker's guide for the programmable music box. I think, again, this is going to be super fun. Um, I used to love music boxes when I was a little kid. I just, the the sound is very relaxing to me. Um, so it talks about what's in the booklet. It talks about different, um, let's see, this is a massive hydraulic powered music machine from 1657. It featured a skeleton puppet and set of mechanical blacksmiths. That's cool. And then the Regina music boxes. Um, so that's cool. And I keep saying that's cool. I will try to stop doing that. Music boxes are often great at multitasking, functioning as both storage boxes and musical machines. Take this 1978 music box, for example, it doubles as a picture frame and a greeting card holder. That's nice. Um, oh, that's it. The U.S. patent. That's what I was, the word I was looking for in the last video or the, the last box. So again, we've got our uh, diagram of all of our parts. This one has quite a few sections. This is a pretty hefty book here. So we have the evolution of music boxes, um, building the keyboard frame. Well, well, we'll talk about those two building sections. Look inside at the piano keys, more building sections, 
behind the design, the science of it, five things, and design challenge. Um, so it talks about the evolution of music boxes. And then we talk about, uh, or it shows you how to build the keyboard frame. That's a, the little felt pieces go in there. Oh, it does. It does have the notes. So finishing the keyboard. And the keys do have the notes on them. Okay. And then it talks about the piano keys, building the drum. Build the drum frame. Well, that's very nice. You can have it either a right-handed or left-handed gear. Um, so that makes it nice for kids that are left-handed because a lot of times people don't think about that a whole lot. None of us are left-handed in this house, but we do have family that is left-handed, so, and friends. Um, and then it talks about how to attach the keyboard and how to use the music box. So you do put those little kind of burgundy pegs in. Um, and that's, and it reads like sheet music. So this will be interesting. Oh, cool, cool. So they do give you like a peg sheet of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, La Cucaracha, Happy Birthday. Um, Pacha Bell's Cannon. I don't know if I said that right. I'm sure I probably didn't. Uh, and then it gives you the difficulty. And then it does give you Okay, a little download so that they can write their own music. I really think she's going to have a lot of fun with this. Um, yeah. And then they've got the little troubleshooting guide. I love that. I'm, I'm a big one for learning how to troubleshoot things. So then it talks about uh, behind the design, the prototypes, all of that. There's more places to explore. Talks about pitch and frequency programmable music machines, so boat beats, a string thing, well, well, wheel, built it out and making waves, uh, tonal percussion instruments. So it talks about like designing your own, your own kind of thing here. That's really cool. Um, maybe she will build that with my dad. And then they can, they can program some music into it. So, um, again, that's the programmable music box, Eureka Crate 14 and up. Um, that's really cool. I know I said I wasn't going to say cool anymore, but I did. <laughs> and then the last box in this set for our, for this video is the build your own wooden ukulele create a four string concert ukulele and play some sweet tunes <laughs> not just tunes sweet tunes uh my oldest daughter does have a guitar it automatically it has like an auto tune thing so yeah so i don't have to be trusted <laughs> usually if i can hear if i if i can hear the note i can tune it um, I did not know that I could do that until recently, but I did grow up listening to music. Uh, my dad sings, lots of people in my family. That is adorable. That is super, super adorable. The little tiny ukulele. Uh, and then all the pieces here. I think my brother had a ukulele when we were kids. And then we've got the string here looks like straight it looks like fishing line um and whatever those little brackets are for and then we have some more 
something. It looks like these are the ukulele strings because they're white and that's what the picture is showing. So I wonder what the colors are for. I'm sure the instructions will tell us. Oh, that's super cute. There's a little tiny screwdriver in here. <laughs> um, and then like these big pins. And I forget, is this called the fret? I was trying to learn with my daughter, but I'm not picking it up as quickly as she is. We've got this stuff here. And then another screwdriver. And and that good stuff. So here we have the wooden ukulele and it talks about what is this like a little bit of the history of the ukulele. I wonder what happened to my brother's ukulele <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. Okay and then we've got our supply list here, uh, the science of sound waves, the build sections, uh, what is that stuff? Wood? I don't know. Maybe that's wood. I don't know. Building sections, behind the design, the history, the five things, and the decision, uh, I'm sorry, the design challenge. So, sound waves, putting science to work. So, this is neat. It gives you that, that information about how, how sound translates to us. Okay. And then we've got the directions here. All that good stuff. Build the body and neck. For Christmas, she actually got a Lego Fender kit. So she's already built a guitar out of Legos. Uh, I think it was the the guitar and then there was an amp um, and it doesn't work, <laughs> but it was really awesome. It was really neat. What's this? What's that stuff wood? So yes, this piece is obviously wood. All right. I, if you say so. It's strong, flexible and makes nice warm sound. I love how people describe sound, like warm sound. What would cold sound be? So more directions. This is going to be like a lot of work. I really, really hope she lets me record this because I think it would be a neat thing for people to watch. Uh, how to tune the ukulele, how to play the ukulele. Oh my gosh, learning how, like learning the chords. I don't know. I, that's a lot of work. I tried that. I'm not so good at it. Okay, but they've got Clementine, Aloha, I think it's Aloha A, Aloha O, E, I'm not sure. Pop song progression. Is that that four, four chord thing? That's funny. And then behind the design, we did learn a little bit about the behind the design for guitars uh, from the course that she's taking. It's just like a, a DVD course for right now. And then the history of design of the ukulele. Oh, it looks like a little teddy bear in there. Precious. Precious. Plucked string instruments. My dad has a 12 string that I grew up listening to him play. And he's had other guitars, but I, I love the 12 string. That's, that's my favorite. And then a design challenge. Oh, that's fun. All toys and rubber bands. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Uh, I really think these will be very fun for her to do. Again, this is the Build Your Own Wooden Ukulele, ages 14 and up from the Eureka Crate. These are all from KiwiCo. Uh, we did a 12-month subscription. 
but the first three months I got all at once. They've been sitting in the box for a year now. And uh, so before we take them with us on vacation, I wanted to do unboxings so that I can put that out there. And that way, uh, if we do any videos of actually using the crates, it'll make more sense. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pause this and I'm going to bring out the last set of crates. And those are the Atlas uh, crates. Okay. So this is the final part of this video for this subscription. It is the Atlas crate for ages six and up. These are our first, uh, three boxes of the one year subscription. We have Brazil, Germany, and world. I did upgrade this particular set and I also got the extra books. Uh, so they do offer that you can get extra books with the Atlas crates. I did that. Um, I'm always looking for new books because I love books. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clear some of this away and we will get started unboxing. We are going to start with Brazil. Got a book here. Move these out of the way. Real quick though, before I start with that, um, they did have this little sales brochure that came in the box. So it just talks about KiwiCo. I paid for this subscription myself. Normally it is covered under our charter school funds, but I ordered a lot of subscriptions for this this year and we did a lot of in-person classes. So this one I paid out of pocket. Uh, I did not get any, I, I didn't get anything from KiwiCo that I did not pay for. So everything that I am showing you is, nothing was given to me for this. Um, any reviews are completely my own. I don't get any kickbacks from KiwiCo to show any of this. There are no uh, affiliate links, none of that. So I'm just showing you what I got in the box. <laughs> um, so it says small today, big tomorrow. Celebrate this season of discovery with KiwiCo. Um, so it talks about big ideas to explore. Um, it does have this use code discover at kiwico.com slash store for $10 off store orders over $50. The nice thing about KiwiCo is that you don't have to do a full subscription. Oh, this says it expires 9 30 2022 um but they always have some sort of deal on their website so you can always go to their website look along the top of the web page they've always got something going on um also if you have rakuten sometimes you get a better deal with rakuten but do not use a coupon code if you want to get your rakuten points or money back um you cannot do both and they will always take the coupon before the Rakuten points. I was pretty upset about that last year, but I'm going to talk about that in a different video. Uh, but if you just want to try out a kit, these are great. Uh, so they've got Splash Blasters, Bubble Machine. We got the Bubble Machine. I can't remember if my kids have made that or not. Um, sometimes they take the kits with uh, my mom when they go visit their grandma. So uh, they did, we did get the glowing horn unicorn costume. That is on one of my kids' walls as decoration. But that was fun. It, it's quite large. Uh, there is an ice tie-dyed hat and sock set. We did purchase that, but I don't know that we've done it. I'm not good with messes. Giant bubbles. Draw and grow planter, environmental science oil cleanup, paleontologist starter kit. I We do have the paleontologist, I can't talk now. We do have this, the paleontologist starter kit. Um, I don't, I don't think we've ever used that though. We bought a lot of kits and then we just kind of stuck them in a closet. Um, say, same science of cooking ice cream. I'm 99% sure that I have that as well. 
um, metamorphosing butterfly. We, we did not get that. And a solar lantern. I'm not sure if we have that. Bottle rocket, we do have, we have not used. Uh, eating green, a plant-based feast, kitchen scrap planter. I've, I wanted to get this and they did not have it when I was ready to purchase. So who knows? Maybe eventually I'll go back and get it. There's an energy conservation. What does this say? Oh, that's just kind of the theme. A solar crayon recycler. That looks interesting. Uh, stereo headphones. So we did purchase this and my oldest daughter made those. They worked for a very long time and then the cat ate the cord. <laughs> um, and they would have continued working if the cat would not have eaten the cord. This is really neat. The making a mini journal. I remember making paper when I was in school. Uh, there's a window garden, the ukulele we just saw, backyard wave machine, what is this one, uh, the astronaut starter kit, I'm pretty sure that we have that and we have not used it yet, colorful chemistry, meet a zookeeper, make your own robot, I don't know if I have those, um, yeah. One of the things that we do have and we have opened, so I don't think I can do an unboxing because I don't know where all the parts are. They do have a frog dissection kit, but it's not, it, it, you don't dissect the frog per se. It's a stuffed animal. Um, so my kids love it. Uh, it's, it's a, it's so much fun. Uh, but my kid, has it in her room with all of her stuffed animals. It's, it's huge. Uh, the belly has buttons and it opens up and then it has like organs that come out that are felt and stuffed. And um, we always get people that talk to us about it because it's, it, she's taken it to school. It's really neat. Um, so I do recommend that one because you can talk about the innards of a frog and not have to get too, too deep into <laughs> actual dissection. So the first box we're going to look at is Brazil. We actually have family from Brazil and we have family living in Brazil. So this one's fun. Uh, this is the ruler of the springs. And we have never opened these. So it's very, it's very new. Um, so this is just a little chapter book. I'm not going to like flip through every page. The ruler of the springs oversees the springs, rivers, and lakes in the rainforest. One day her mother disappears and then her baby son. Can the ruler find them and reunite her family? From Barefoot Books. Uh, simple vocabulary, short sentences, and exciting plots for the early reader. My kids are not early readers, so who knows? Um, I know that these kits are six and up, so they do have to really hit that early reader stage. I do wish they would every once in a while include something that was a little bit more mature. Uh, I do believe that when kids are picking their own books, they can go for whatever they want, but when we're trying to pick books for our kids, we should always go just slightly above their level, um, gives them something to kind of aim for. <laughs> so this says, make a hanging sloth, build a mini soccer game, and explore Brazil. And this one's actually taped shut. So let me open this up. All right, so we've got this. I never end up putting these back the way that they come out. So, or the way that they're sent to us. So we'll see how I do. I'm gonna move this over for just a minute. So the first thing we have here is a make your own table soccer game. Uh, build a mini Brazilian Estadio de 
football. Football. I'm really sorry if I just mangled that, but sometimes I can pronounce things. Um, but I took French in school. So there's that. Uh, so what this reminds me of here in America is a foosball table. Uh, we actually have a coffee table that has a foosball table built into it, like a mini one. Um, so this is really cute. And there I go with that cute thing. Every four years, teams from all over the world try to qualify for the World Cup Soccer Tournament. So it's basically instructions to build this, this little game here. And then you've got some how to play and did you know and, and all that good stuff. So... See, I'll show you all the inside stuff in just a second because it's all mixed together. Um, this is a make your own three toed sloth. Build a Brazilian rainforest animal. That's adorable. Hang your sloth from this vine or anywhere you like. Sloths are so strange to me. <laughs> uh, so it talks about there's felt body pieces, limbs, yarn, both uh, dark and light fluff leaves and scratchy dots <laughs> so it talks about the sloth it gives instructions how to build both the sloth and the little rainforest vine and it gives a few facts here i know like for a minute sloths were all the rage i don't know they're they're slow i could never <laughs> i could never function as a sloth i'll be honest Sloths stress me out. <laughs> so here we have, this is just paper. Um, and these are, yeah, I mean, they're not even, like, a, they're, it's a pretty thin paper. I don't know how well these are going to work. Um, so that's like the board. And then these are the sides to the game. You get the little hole, the ball goes through. You've got some sticks that the players go on uh, and then this stuff here a little ball for the thing maybe these uh, foam stickers help to reinforce the little players and then this you've got your felt sloth and your leaves and your cords and your What did they call this? It's Velcro. <laughs> they call it scratchy dots. It's Velcro. Uh, I think Velcro is trademarked, so that's probably why they didn't say it. And normally, like in the sewing world, you would call it hook and loop tape, but this is only the hook side. So calling it hook tape circles might sound funny to people, uh, but it's Velcro. And then fluff stuffing. <laughs> uh. Sometimes the things people write. Okay, something in there was a little sticky. I don't If you've ever watched any of my videos, you know that I have issues with textures. <laughs> I'm gonna put these back in the box. And I'm gonna open this flat because every time I pick it up to open it, stuff falls out. It's, I am just a hot mess sometimes. Okay, so here we have the top says Discover Brazil. Then you have at the bottom an Atlas Quest, so it's just kind of a fill in the blank. You've got some facts here. You get a little sticker. And then you have these little cards. And I th think I finally figured out what you do with the cards is you get just the, the rings, the metal rings that open and close, and you just kind of make your own book out of it. Um, so it talks about... Things to do in this crate, discover Brazil with Anya and Milo, hang out with the sloth, dance the samba, discover rainforest animals, explore epic waterfalls, make chocolate, brigadeiros, that sounds delicious, <laughs> unless it's bugs, um, build a soccer game and score a goal. So I'm going to put that sticker at the bottom so that I don't lose it. So it just talks about introducing Brazil. And it's got some different information here. 
um, we had some family that went to go visit the family that's in Brazil and they went to Rio de Janeiro. So it was really neat getting to see that um, on social media. Because I don't know when I will be able to get to Brazil, if ever. <laughs> so it's got some facts here. Uh, the Anya and Milo situation, it's set up as if they're tourists in different areas. So they write about their trip, day one, two, three, four. So that's fun. It's talking about the Iguazu Falls. I think I said that right. It does have pronunciation there, which I do appreciate. Uh, some of these boxes, they don't tell you how to pronounce things and that drives me nuts. I like to at least try to pronounce it correctly. <laughs> Talks about the geology, uh, legends, rainforest creatures, frog. Um, capybara. We just went to the zoo in March and we, we basically saw the shadows of the capybara. Um, they did not come out. We stood there forever waiting to see if they would come out and they didn't. My kids really wanted to see them, but we did get to see their shadows. They were eating like behind the scenes. So we kind of barely saw them. Um, piranhas. Let's see the Samba. I'm trying to see if I have ever learned to Samba. I don't know if I ever did. I'm pretty sure I learned to tango. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Brigaderos legend has it that these chewy candies were first introduced as treats for voters during a Brazilian presidential campaign in the 1940s. The candidate lost, but chocolate lovers won as these rich little nuggets became popular all over the country. That is fun to know if I ever want to run for office. <laughs> okay. So what do we need? Uh, Sweetened condensed milk, unsweetened cocoa. See, this is someone, if you've ever, if you've watched one of my cook with me's, I just was complaining about this, that when people say tablespoons of cocoa, some, someone just said baking cocoa, but this, this is what I want to see. Unsweetened cocoa. And that's what I need to know. Water, butter, and chocolate or rainbow sprinkles. Huh. I will have to try that because basically anything with chocolate is good for me. <laughs> All right. So that is the Brazil kit. Let's see if I can put this back how I found it. I think those go and then this and then like that, right? Maybe. My kids actually don't care if I put it back exactly how I found it, but I think it's kind of fun to be able to get this and um, feel like you're getting like a postcard or a gift in the mail. So again, that is the Brazil Atlas crate ages six and up. Um, so there's little crafts and all that good stuff. All right, the next one we are gonna do is Germany. I'm actually super excited about the Germany one <sighs> because I'm going to set that to the side for a minute because it came with a book with classic fairy tales by the Brothers Grimm. Does it get any better than that? We are very into Halloween in this house and scary things. And I feel like Grimm is just like, perfect for storytelling <laughs> and my kids are older so they're not going to get all freaked out by this but it includes let's see it says this wonderfully illustrated book will lead you into rediscovering some of the most beloved children's stories of all time experiencing the adventures of characters who have become popular thanks to the brothers Grimm, the frog prince rapunzel hansel and gretel little red riding hood puss in boots tom thumb cinderella the Bremen Town Musicians, Snow White, and Little Briar Rose. I will be curious to see if how how much they stick to the Grimm stories. Because I've read 
the grim version of Cinderella and it's, it's grim. <laughs> um, so again, I'm not going to really, there's the, yeah, I have a feeling they've kind of cleaned these up a bit. Um, so I wonder what that candy house looks like. Oh, they, they could have done better for that. <laughs> I say that, but I, I can't draw. I can't draw a straight line. So, um, yeah, the pictures are very pretty. The artwork is very nice for someone who knows little to nothing about artwork. So that's great. Um, but yeah, I highly doubt that these are full on Grim Tales, um, but we'll see, we'll see. But I was excited to see that in the box. So this here, the Atlas Crate for Germany, zoom along the Autobahn, right sneaky, I'm sorry, right whack, <laughs> right wacky fairy tales and explore Germany. Uh, my last name is German, but I am not actually German. Um, so, oh, yeah, I don't think we're German. I mean, there could be, I guess, some German in there somewhere, but we are not actually really German. So it's got a little car and launcher, and then it talks about fairy tales. I really like... Um, the idea of the make your own fairy tale stuff. Lego did that for a minute and then they discontinued it. And I thought that was a shame. So we'll see. I'll talk about that when we look at that book. So make your own car and launcher speed along Germany's famous Autobahn. That looks super fun. All right. So it does talk about the Autobahn that well, alrighty then. Apparently my neighborhood be talking about the Autobahn. <laughs> so it's got the directions how to put the little car launcher together, how to build the little car that looks kind of like a VW bug. <laughs> a for effort on that one. Um, and then it just talks about, it is against the law to run out of gas on the Autobahn. Interesting that they call it gas because I don't think they actually call it gas over there. Don't in, in Europe and whatnot, don't they call it like petrol and fuel and they wouldn't call it gas. It's very American. Um, yeah, so that'll be fun. This one is a make your own fairy tales, a fill in the blanks twist on the brothers Grimm. So this is similar to what Lego used to offer a kit that you would have a bunch of different characters you could mix and match the parts and then you had this base um, base square and you would build your set um, and you'd create your whole story so this is kind of similar here a lot of the classic fairy tales we know and love are called Grimm's fairy tales that's not because Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm wrote the stories. Instead, the two brothers collected the stories that had been told and retold for generations in Germany. In 1812, the brothers Grimm started publishing the folk tales they collected. Today, these stories are known as Grimm's fairy tales. Good enough. So in this kit here, we have some colored pencils. You kind of know what colored pencils look like, but here basic colors there. Uh, let's see. We have our fill in the blank book so you can put your name there and then it's um, you could draw a little picture and you just fill in that stuff. What were those called where you I don't know my brain's not going to work right now. Um, I want to say a slam book, but that's not it. Uh, they they had those books when I was growing up, and I know they still do, where you get a notebook and you fill in the blanks like that. It says, write a place. 
Uh, so there are some wooden blocks, two, four, six, eight, nine, nine wooden blocks. Doesn't nine in German mean no? <laughs> um, and then it has these little stickers. So I assume that you put one color on each block and then you can roll them and that will help you pick your story if you, if that's how you want to do it. I could have just looked at the directions. Um, so yes, that's what it says, is that on these blank ones, you can fill in your own information and each, each cube here gets the stickers and then you do your storytelling challenge. So that's kind of fun. Um, yeah. And then these are the pieces for the car. Uh, this is probably the launcher and this is the car. And then there's like some rubber bands and like plastic washers. So we'll put all of this back in here for right now. And then we will open this. Now I know this word, <laughs> Guten Tag. I, I speak very little German, um, but I do know Guten Tag. And I know Danke and Beta, which is thank you and you're welcome. I know a few other words that I'm not going to say on camera right now. Um, normally I always learn <laughs> food words, but I don't really know. I don't think I know any food words in German. Um, so we have like some facts over on the sides and then the fill in the blank. We've got the little sticker here for Germany and things to do in this crate. Zoom along the Audubon, twist your own pretzels. That sounds fun. Write some wacky fairy tales. Meet Ludwig, Ludwig van Beethoven. Um, <laughs> explore King Ludwig's castle and dance the Oh wow, Schollplatter? Schol <laughs> I it, I think I've been doing this too long. I'm not going to attempt that again. That was not the right way to say it. Um, so yeah, we've got our map of Germany. It's got some facts about Germany. I grabbed two cards there. Uh, in German, it talks about the printing press and. Decorations for Christmas, the gummy bear, Castle Frankenstein, Currywurst, no thank you. <laughs> uh, oh, can I say that? New Schwanstein Castle. Walt Disney was inspired by this castle when he designed Disneyland. All right, if you say so. Cool, cool. And then it talks about, is this all the castle? This, I think this is the part of the castle. And then, yeah. And then we have our travel journal for Anya and Milo. So, Guten Tag. Auf, oh, I know what this one is. Auf Wiedersehen. I'll read the zine. Um, ja and nine. See, I knew nine. Bitte, danke. Please and thank you. Bitte. Yeah. And es war, es war ein Mal. Okay, once upon a time. Okay. So then we have. Day two, three, and four, a Christmas museum. How fun. Cool. Then then it talks about Beethoven. In order to stay awake and keep composing, Beethoven would sometimes dip his head in cold water. All right. Um, so, yeah, it talks a little about Beethoven. I'm not going to attempt this one again. It means shoe slapping. 
I don't even know if I would attempt that dance. I don't know if I want to slap my shoes, but you, you slap your legs and then you slap your shoes and it's a lot of slapping for a dance. <laughs> All right. There's a link, it looks like, for that. And the last thing here we have is the pretzels. Salty pretzels taste marvelous with mustard. I like pretzels with mustard or pretzels with cheese. My kids don't like mustard at all. Uh, pretzels are called breslin and more than a snack, they're practically a national symbol. Good fortune on New Year's Day. That's good to know. Um, I do love pretzels though. I love crunchy pretzels. I love soft pretzels. I got a pretzel when we went to the Sacramento Zoo in March. It was terrible. It was like super, super stale. I was not happy about that. But maybe we'll try to make some pretzels um, on our trip. On our trip to Arizona. with my non-German grandma, <laughs> uh, with the German last name. All right, so that is the Germany crate. I will not be wishing you Auf Wiedersehen just yet. <laughs> um, again, that's Germany, Autobahn, fairy tales, fun stuff. And our last crate is the world. <laughs> so the book that came with this set is the Atlas Obscura Explorer's Guide for the World's Most Adventurous Kid. 40 countries, 100 extraordinary places to visit. Um, neat. So it talks about a packing list if you're going to go on your trip a, a solar charger highly important goat treats in case you run into some adorable hungry goats is that duct tape sure enough is they really thought about that one duct tape is a necessity <laughs> so apparently it's going to talk about all of these different places this is our adventure plan um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just going to kind of look at some of this because I, I've not been to most of these places. I have, I have been to Mexico. Um, I'm in California and I think it's like a rite of passage. You have to get to Mexico at least some part time in your life. Um, but the very first place in the United States that I see is Texas. <laughs> um, I have been to Texas actually a couple of times. And then we have Tennessee. I uh, had an uncle that lived in Tennessee once. Um, that's funny. So, and I, I have friends and family that have lived all over. So it'll be interesting to go through this and maybe I'll have to message them and ask them certain things. Um, Wyoming, not sure where they picked these states from. I mean, some of these, like I, I could understand Honduras, sure. But some of these states from the United States kind of make me laugh. Um, Washington State. I have, I have been there, actually. Fashion Island Bike Tree and Momo, Mom, Mima Mounds. I don't know about any of that. Canada. I have been to Canada. Uh, yeah. I don't get around much. <laughs> so... I'm not going to go through this whole book, but we're just going to kind of flip through a little. We'll see if we land on anything. I, I didn't stop for. So Italy, I know that we, well, I, yeah, I know that we have a Atlas crate for Italy. I think we purchased it separately. I don't know if I will end up doing an unboxing for that. Um, but this will be interesting to have if if we still have that. Uh, so China, Texas, Forgotten Subterranean Worlds, Superconducting Super Collider, 
planning for the future. I, I did not see any of that stuff. They should have put New Mexico and Roswell because, I mean, come on, aliens. I did go to Roswell. Tennessee. I have some friends in Tennessee right now living there. Towering trees, bioluminescent beasts. <laughs> uh, super fun. Ugh, Australia with their humongous insects and rodents and, and animals and all kinds of stuff. Brazil, Egypt. I kind of wanted to see Canada. There's a bridge in Canada and we went there. Um, I did not go on the bridge though. I am incredibly afraid of heights. Rain of fish. That would freak me out. Not going to lie. <laughs> Spaghetti ice. Oh, spaghetti and fish ice cream. No, thanks. No, thanks. So this is, this is fun. How did they put this book together and they didn't think to put California in here? I mean, California. Tremendous trees. Canada. Uh, nope. Mm, can't say I've been in any of those places. Yeah, they had one place that had like this super, super long suspension bridge and I refused to go on it. I think I stayed at the gift shop. I am so afraid of heights. So this is the Alice Crate for the world. Learn about maps, build your own globe, and start exploring the world. And I'm going to open the tape. And then we will get started. This is our last box. So if you have watched all the way through, I really appreciate you for hanging out with me and all the things. Yeah, just close the door a little. Okay, so we have this here. Whoever packed this was a little overzealous. Um, they wrinkled my book. So there is a make your own spinning globe. Am I really supposed to like, I think I'm supposed to glue things. Okay, so there is felt land masses <laughs> and all of this. So it's just directions about how to put this stuff together. It has the actual sizes here. So fun fact, I am just going to glance through here. So the equator. Um, and you can look this up if you don't believe me, because maybe I have it wrong, but I saw this report once that on most maps, um, well, that's not right. It's not going to line up because I don't want to stick it together because I don't want it to go back in here. So we've got... Where are we here? I think this is Australia. I don't, that's looking weird to me. I don't know. I am super confused. Huh. This is North America, so this is North America, and this is gonna be South America. So you can see, like, South America is not that big here, but really, South America is bigger than North America, but apparently more people in North America purchase maps, so they make North America bigger. I don't know what the deal is with that. You can absolutely fact check me. I'm, I'm totally cool with that. Um, I just think it's interesting and a little 
comical because uh, I would prefer it to just be accurate. You know what I mean? Like I just I just want to know where things are. So then we've got the stand here. We've got our little felt countries. Some I don't know what those are puffy stickers. And then a little tiny heart that I'm assuming is supposed to be where where we are located. Whoever is purchasing this item. This says you can make your own adventure book. Collect Atlas cards in a book. Oh, okay. I get it. I get it. All right. So when I said earlier about the rings, I was wrong. It does happen. It does happen on occasion. So we have uh, bead and cord bindings. There's a whole kit here. Stay. Okay. So you've got these bead and cord bindings, a nameplate, travel stickers. There's some extra Atlas cards and covers here. And then you just need a marker. Um, so this is like the cover and the back cover. And then whenever we get those cards that I was showing you, the Anya and Milo cards, they go in here. So that is very cool. Put the cards in the order you like and then stack the front. So we'll wait to do this until the very end because I taking this apart all the time doesn't sound fun to me. But super de duper. So real quick, since I've got the box open, before we get to our like, cool envelope thing, this says Great Big World Map Challenge. Maps have useful ways to help you understand and find things in the places they show. Um, so it just talks about a map. This is where it's really for like a younger kid. My kids know how to use a map. Um, so there's like, what is this? You can find the location. So there's, it's like questions and answers. Um, and then more learning about lat uh, latitude and longitude stuff and wonder of the world, um, that sort of thing. <laughs> Axolotl, you can find where axolotls are from, I, I'm assuming. Um, I have a friend in Washington that has an axolotl, so there you go. Narwhals, red panda, oh my gosh, we saw the red panda at the zoo. It is so adorable. And banana slugs, hmm. I would be curious where it says the banana slug is because uh, we go to Santa Cruz and we do see banana slugs there. So I'm going to cheat. <laughs> That's purple banana slugs, amazing animals. Um, banana slugs live in the forest along the U.S. Pacific coast. Huh. Yeah, that's, that's where Santa Cruz is. Pacific West Coast. <laughs> Um, so we have gone and seen banana slugs in Felton, California, where they have the Felton trains. Okay, and this is going to be way too big to fit in the screen, and I'm not going to try to zoom out, but it's just like a big map. So, yeah, but still, you see, I don't know, maybe they just said that that it's bigger than the United States, but I thought they were saying that, that South America was bigger than North America. So if I'm if I'm wrong, you can leave a comment, or if I'm right, you can leave a comment. Let me know. Is South America larger than North America? Russia is huge. Okay. So I'm gonna pull this guy back up and put him away. I'm just going to kind of put the rest of this in here as well, just so that I have some space on the table. Okay, so, hola, namaste, salut, privet, privy, konnichiwa. <laughs> we went, we used to go to Disneyland a lot. And uh, we went with my brother and sister-in-law and my nephew when he was very little baby. And they were on Small World Ride. 
and we had the Nextel phones, like the walkie-talkie, and they were all on Small World, and we were waiting for them, and I asked him, where are you? And he says, we're in Asia, and I screamed konnichiwa into the phone, and he said, like, the entire boat behind him, like, started uh, cheering or something, <laughs> So, yeah, silly story. Um, so welcome to Atlas Crate. So this is really like, I feel like if you signed up for Atlas Crate for the one year subscription, that this would be the first first box you would get because this has all of the instructions. And of course, it's probably, well, it's the last box that I'm opening at this one because I was opening them in alphabetical order. So this here is Meet Anya the Cricket meet Milo the Sandpiper. In this crate, you're going to explore the seven continents, take the world map challenge, build your own spinning globe, and start your Atlas Adventure book. Um, and then you've got kind of some beginning letters from Anya and Milo. Was there a sticker? I didn't see a sticker. I guess you get the stickers in that kit. So this is kind of a as you begin, before you get started, um, a little story about, I don't know, it looks like the beginnings of Anya and Milo. And then there's something here. Okay, so it's going to talk about the, the continents. So Africa, um, African giraffes are the tallest. Oh, and a group is called a Tower of Giraffes. That's cool. My oldest daughter is very into giraffes right now. We got to feed a giraffe at the zoo in March. Um, so, you know, just telling you. So it's just got some facts about that. And then Antarctica. You get some facts about there. In Europe. Cool, cool, cool. And then we've got South America, which has a frog. My youngest daughter is very into frogs. So we've got it all covered. Um, bull sharks have been found swimming near the foothills of the Peruvian Andes. We're very into sharks in this house. <laughs> um, Australia. I love that for Australia that they put this adorable koala on the front <laughs> because I just feel like every time I hear a story about Australia that it's about some animal or insect or reptile that will just absolutely demolish you. <laughs> um, like this here, the polyphanta snail has 6,000 teeth and it eats meat. It's as big as a fist. No, 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 no. No, thank you. Um, talks about the Great Barrier Reef, which we all should know from Nemo. That's a lot of beaches. Um, yeah, so they really just kept it to that one snail and they didn't talk about any of the other dangerous, dangerous creatures. And then the adorable panda on the Asia card. They really, they were just like, Let's get the cutest animals on these cards. <laughs> it says bear in mind. Isn't a panda not a bear? I forget. I, I may be thinking of a koala because it's a marsupial, right? So this is neat. It talks about different things. We've actually like done some reading and research on Asia. And then in North America, this is funny. Our charter school has a mascot and our mascot is the owl. So that's super fun. In North America, the barred owl not only hoots, it sometimes barks, hisses, squeaks, whistles, and even laughs. We used to have a white owl that lived in our backyard in a tree. Um, I don't think it lives there anymore. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, General Sherman, the largest living tree. I 
think, not to be a Betty Buzzkill, but I think that tree burnt down. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm just like history is, is always funny to me because it's history is always changing, right? Um, but yeah, I think that one burned down in one of our fires, but I could be wrong. It would not be the first time, right? And then more facts here. So that is the last box for tonight, which is, I'm recording this the evening, by the way. Um, so that's great because I can tell I am losing my voice. Nobody wants to listen to horse fighting, right? I wish they would have put the goodbyes on the back here. Um, I think that would have been cute, but that's just me. That's just me. So that was the Atlas World Crate. And yeah, let me grab my page and I can talk okay. to you real quick so about real the quick, pricing. Just to talk about the pricing uh, for the Atlas Crate. The monthly price is $23.95 and you get free shipping. Three months is $21.95 a month with free shipping. And you, when you order them as a subscription uh, kit, like if you order the three month at $21.95, you do have to pay for all three months up front. Um, a six month is, it works out to $19.95 per month plus free shipping. And the 12 month, the one year subscription is $18.50 a month. And you also get free script, uh, shipping. I wish they said, I'm looking at their website right now, but I wish they said um, what it is for like the total cost. I will do a different video where I talk about the prices and, um, excuse me, where I talk about the prices and my thoughts. I'm not going to do that in this video because this video is long enough. All right. And... Let's see, for the Yummy Crate, I believe the pricing was the same. Um, if you go month to month, it's $23.95. It works out to $23.95 a month. The three-month subscription works out to $21.95 a month. Six-month subscription works out to $19.95 a month. And the 12-month subscription, is it works out to $18.50 a month. I'm just going to set that to the side here. And I think the last crate is the most expensive, but you really, you get a lot of obviously stuff with it. These are the, the Eureka crate. This is the older crate. There's a lot more to these. Um, so if you go monthly, they are $32.95 a month. The three months works out to $30.95 a month. Six months works out to $28.95 a month and 12 months works out to $26.95 a month. Anytime you're doing the subscriptions, you do get free shipping. Um, they do not offer all of these kits individually, but they do offer quite a few kits individually. So if you just wanna test them out, check out what they have on their site, kiwico.com, and you can buy a couple of them. They have some kits that you can purchase if you wanted to do like a birthday party and you wanted everybody to do a craft. They sell like a bunch of the same box at a discount. I think that's a great offer because um, it's hard to find things for birthday parties sometimes and you don't want to just send kids home with a bag of stuff that is either candy that they're going to get a sugar high or that it's stuff the parents are just going to throw away anyway. So. Um, these are cool. It gives the kids something to do, an activity during a birthday party, and then they, they get to bring something home that they might use later. So that is my big <laughs> KiwiCo haul uh, unboxing. This was the first three months of our 12-month subscription. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to give it a like or a thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe, hit that bell, that notification bell, and you will be notified every time I upload a new video 
or when I go live. I do go live on YouTube and Facebook at seven o'clock on Wednesdays Pacific time. Uh, I will be doing more KiwiCo unboxings. I will label these so that you know what months I got them. And I will be doing the whole one year subscription. Um, I, like I've said before, I have tons of these KiwiCo boxes that we purchased individually. So if I have some that we have never opened, I may do those later on, but I want to do the one year subscriptions kind of all together as like a series. So you could see what you would get in the first year of any of these three subscriptions. So again, I want to thank you so much for watching. I know this is a long video. They will be shorter in the future. <laughs> um, and if I ever, if the kids ever want to do these on camera where they actually make the things, I will always put them up with, with the kids' permission. And I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.